Hey, it's Jag. Preamp day. I'm going to today introduce you to the preamp circuit itself. I'm not doing the power supply today. Uh, I'm still making up my mind exactly how I want to build the power supply. Uh, and I don't have to have that uh, to get started on this. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, look at the screen recording uh, and I can show you uh, the schematic and uh, what's going on with that. It's based on uh, a designed by uh, Kevin O'Connor from uh, uh, London Power. I have uh, made some changes. I've added uh, balanced output on here and uh, I've changed most of the values of the components to standard values. If you look at any preamp, uh, any Fender preamp, any Marshall preamp, uh, virtually any preamp, you're going to see things that are very similar here. So I'm not really going to describe too much the function of these components. Down the road, I'd like to maybe do a series on how tube amplifiers work and tubes, but it's beyond the scope of this project right now. So here's the uh, schematic drawing. Uh, we have, of course, uh, the input. Uh, we go to a uh, grid return resistor, uh, grid stopper. Grid return is standard 1 meg uh, ohm. Uh, the grid stopper is uh, 68K. We go in to the grid of uh, V1 of the 12AX7. Uh, we have a 4K7 cathode resistor, and there is no bypass capacitor on here. Feeding the plate, uh, we have V plus going through a 220K resistor to the plate of V1. Then the output of this tube goes through a coupling capacitor, 47 nanofarad, another 1 meg uh, grid return resistor, and then into the grid of V2 of the 12AX7. This one, the plate uh, is fed uh, through a 100K resistor, and we have again an unbypassed cathode resistor, uh, 1.5K. From there we go to another coupling capacitor, 47 nanofarad, and we have a, a feedback loop going back uh, to the cathode of V1. This controls the drive of the preamp. It's going to inject some of the signal uh, from the output here back in, and that will uh, allow us to uh, control the drive of the preamp. From there, we go on to the tone stack. This is a pretty standard tone stack, a 47 picofarad cap for treble, uh, 100K slope resistor, uh, 47 nanofarad uh, capacitor for the base and a 47 nanofarad capacitor for uh, the mid. Uh, here we have our 220k uh, treble control. I'm going to use a 250k pod. That's a more common value. Our base control, 1 meg audio. And then on the mid, I will be using a 25k for the mid, again, because it's a more common value. The output of the tone stack, which is taken from the wiper of the uh, treble control, then comes into the high side of the volume control, and that's a one meg audio pot. The output of that, again, comes from the wiper and then goes to our output connectors. I have an un unbalanced connector here. You can see this just comes straight out of here, goes to the jack. We plug a, a, a standard guitar patch cable uh, in here and send it off to whatever we want to send it off to, or we can come through, we have an isolation transformer here. I haven't marked the value on here. It's a Hammond uh, 109T one-to-one -one transformer, 10K primary, 10K secondary. This is basically just uh, essentially the same circuit as a, a passive DI box. We take the output of that and we're going to a TRS output jack. We have a ground lift. So if we have noise, we can, we can open that switch. This capacitor here isolates the circuit from ground when we lift this and this part of the circuit comes in. So that's the, that's the circuit. Here's my hand-drawn uh, layout. I've uh, drawn uh, and color-coded some of the lines here. This is not how I'm going to be uh, running these wires particularly. Um, I just did this just so I could keep track of where the grounds were, uh, where my output signals were, where the hots of my output signals were, where the cold side of my output signals were, and the general wiring. Today I'm working on the circuit card, so just this part uh, of the circuit. A couple of the components are not uh, 
mounted on this circuit card, the one meg to ground here, and the 68K grid stopper. It just makes sense to put this one meg here. We have this uh, shorting connection here. When there's nothing plugged in, uh, this link here um, will connect uh, to ground. These uh, jacks are, uh, they have shorting connectors. When the jack is plugged in, the jack opens the connection across these two uh, terminals and the tip sees this one meg to ground. When nothing is plugged in, this shorts the tip to ground, uh, effectively the same thing as turning your volume control all the way down. So going down here, we have our uh, 4.7K cathode resistor uh, for V1. We also have the 22 microfarad capacitor and the 10K resistor. Uh, for the drive control, you can see that's uh, that's up here, and that drive is being fed by the uh, output from a V2. You can see we have the plate here coming through. The 100K plate load resistor is here, and the uh, coupling cap. Uh, so we're feeding some of that back through this drive uh, pot and into uh, this part of the circuit uh, back to the cathode of V1. So next we have the, uh, the cathode resistor for V2, 1.5K. Uh, we have the 1 meg grid return resistor for V2. That's going to pin 7, which is uh, the grid. And then again, we have a, another uh, coupling capacitor. And we have the plate of V1 connected here as well. And then we have our V plus feeding that plate through the 220K uh, resistor I talked about earlier. Next to that, V plus also here uh, through 100K resistor feeding the plate of V2 of the 12AX7. And we're taking our output there through this coupling capacitor. From there, we go to the tone stack. We also have that feed uh, for the drive control coming off this same point. Uh, so here is the tone stack, our 470 picofarad uh, cap going to the treble control our 100K slope resistor, and then the uh, 47 uh, nanofarad cap for the middle control up here, and the 47 nanofarad for the base control. From there, off board on the, uh, the components mounted to the front panel, we have wiring for all of our connections for our, uh, our tone section. Uh, the low side of base goes to the uh, middle tab of the mid control. We have the wiper of the base uh, going to the low side of the treble control. We have the wiper of the treble control going to the input of the volume and from there uh, the low side of the volume is grounded and the, um, the wiper uh, is where we take our output. So from here uh, we go to the uh, the output jack, and we're also going into the transformer for uh, the balanced uh, direct out from this preamp. So here's the 10k resistor across the output of the um, of the uh, transformer, and here's our ground lift circuit, the 51 uh, ohm one watt resistor and 10 nanofarad capacitor. So our outputs, as I say, the hot uh, for the unbalanced is direct off of the volume control to the output jack. This is the ground for the output jack. And from the transformer, we have a cold and a hot side. The hot side is going to pin two of the XLR connector on the output. I may use TRS. I, I haven't decided. I've shown TRS on the schematic and I'm showing XLR here. The cold side goes to pin three. And ground, of course, goes to pin one. And here is the switch for our lift for that circuit. So you can see that our, our ground lift circuit is connected here. And when this switch is open, our ground goes through the lift circuit. When this switch is closed, we are going direct to ground. Uh, this circuitry has no effect then. So this is my hand drawing for the layout. What you're doing here is you're taking your schematic and you're looking at all the connections that need to happen between all the components and then you're, you lay out the components 
on your drawing for your circuit card and just make sure that it basically flows input to output. You don't want to have components for the input and then right next to them have components for the output. You'll get some of the later stage signal re-inputting uh, to, to the front of the circuit even though there's nothing actually connected there. It'll be a, a capacitive connection. So once I've, I had all of my components laid out on my card drawing, I did a, uh, a cleaner version of this just showing all the locations where I need to have um, eyelets to solder components to. Here's the circuit card drawn uh, with all the components removed. So basically what I need to do with this when I print it out, it's a one-to-one -one print and um, I just print that out on a piece of paper, cut it out, put it on my, uh, my circuit card stock and uh, drill the holes and punch the eyelets in. The last thing I want to do before I actually start making the circuit card is make sure that all the parts physically will fit. I showed uh, in one of my previous builds how I use a, a piece of foam to put the parts, uh, the components in as I'm soldering onto a, a circuit card or turret board. And um, because this is such a, a small and actually simple circuit with relatively few parts, I did a, a similar thing. I took my, my circuit card template and I sticky taped it to, or I double side taped it to a piece of foam and put one of the temp, printed out a template for the circuit card, put it down and then actually put all the parts in where they're going to go just to make sure that everything would fit. Uh, so um, that, that works quite well in terms of making sure everything will fit on the card. Also I can leave everything on here um, until I'm ready to start soldering to the card and I just pull the parts off, solder them to the card, and we're, we're off and running. It's, uh, I don't even really have to think about doing it. This, this, will take, this card will be soldered up very quickly. I'm not going to be doing any soldering today. That will be in the next video, um, but I just thought I'd show you this. Regarding the card, what I'm going to do next is, is make the circuit card. So here I've got some of the circuit card stock uh, that, that I use. Um, I think I got this actually from London Power, uh, Kevin O'Connor's uh, company in Toronto. You just cut what you need and you you put your template on. I've, I've stuck my template on with double-sided sticky tape. And then I'm just going to drill through in all of these uh, locations where the eyelets need to go. Um, I have my, my bag of eyelets and my staking tool. There's a, a, an eyelet and uh, the staking tool. The staking tool has this... Uh, little sort of uh, point with or grooves in it. So what you do is you, you put the eyelet down into your circuit card and then you use your drill press to just uh, uh, press the, uh, the eyelet. Uh, basically it's, it's just like a rivet and you press that into the hole uh, that you drill in the circuit card. So with all that uh, laid out and described. Uh, let's head out to the uh, wood shop. I will cut and drill uh, the circuit card and uh, we'll get back in here and we'll wrap up for today. One thing that, uh, that I do to make staking these in uh, a little quicker is once I have the holes drilled and I put the eyelets in through the holes, um, I put them all in on the top and then tape them down like this so that I can turn it over and I can just stake all of the, uh, uh, the rivets or eyelets uh, very quickly.
that's the circuit card made. So today we have gone through uh, the circuit for the preamp, uh, the layout for the circuit card. Uh, I showed you the template for the circuit card and uh, you saw the making of the circuit card. Um, that's all I have time for today. Um, my next video, uh, we will start soldering components to this board. Uh, so we will have uh, the preamp uh, circuit card completed next video. Uh, and we will start into deciding uh, what to do uh, for the power supply. I'm doing this uh, a little bit by the seat of my pants. I have not decided on a chassis or a cabinet for this, uh, mainly because, as I say, I, I haven't decided for sure what I'm doing for uh, the power supply. Uh, so I will have to have that figured out for the next video. Um, and then once I know how much space I need for the power supply, I can figure out what size chassis. I don't have a metal break or anything like that, so I will be buying a chassis. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for the cabinet yet either. So like always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check my band One Soul Thrust as always. The links are below. And until the next video, we'll see you.